Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We're in Palo Alto at the Security in the Boardroom event. It's put on by the Chertoff Group. They do a couple of these a year all across the country and you know, they're all about security, but what's interesting is it's not really the tech conversation of security or the gadgets and, or it's a lot of the things we typically cover on theCUBE, but really more this event's about the boardroom and making it a boardroom topic and a boardroom conversation. So we're really excited to have our next guest. He's Brad Hibbert, he's the CTO of Beyond Trust. Brad, welcome. Oh, thank you, glad to be here. Absolutely, so you just got off the, uh, off the keynote stage talking about CISOs and, and how, do you, how do you help those guys do their job? They're in a crazy position. That's right, yeah, so I was just talking about how to, to make them feel more comfortable talking you know, sort of the boardroom language and, and ways that you know, they can work with vendors to help out with that. So it was a good panel. I think I had uh, a number of good perspectives, I think, on, on, the, on the subject. Beyond Trust, give yeah. us a background <laughs> on Beyond Trust. Yeah, sure, so, I, I, so Beyond Trust, uh, we're all about uh, helping people manage the risks, sort okay. of the internal risks in the environment. It's, it's, it's a new area for cybersecurity. It's a new layer of security if you will. Uh, a lot of people are, are familiar with sort of the perimeter-based security, things right. like uh, uh, you know, vulnerability scanning, which we do, so attack surface uh, closures and so on. This is really more about um, when somebody's in the environment or compromised accounts, how do you really secure the environment from, from that type of access? So right. we have a number of products that, that can uh, can solve certain uh, use cases around that. So this must be the PAM that you guys talked about. That's all the right, time. privileged the pri access Privileged management. access uh, management. So that's right. you say privileged access, so as you just said, that's people that are already on the inside. Yeah, so it's, uh, it could be anybody from administrators leveraging shared accounts uh, and, and administrators that need elevated credentials, making sure that you control access to those credentials and making sure that you ensure that they're using them appropriately, so not misusing them or misbehaving in some way uh, with all sorts of auditing capability behind that. It could be your desktop administrators or developers who just need elevated access in some way. What we're finding is that uh, what hackers are doing now is you know, they're going after things. Once they kind of get a footprint in the, in the environment, they're going right. after the credentials. They're going after privileges because right. that, that gives them you know, uh, more access to, to the, the, the corporate data. So is it just that they're a more uh, rich target for the hackers or is it because they're, they have a different behavior um, than kind of your typical person at the end of the, you know, my phone or your kind of typical access point in. Yeah, no, it's a bit of both. I think uh, I think one is, you know, uh, the hackers are going to the to the to the to the path of least resistance, right? So as I mentioned, from a privilege perspective, once you're inside the environment, right. you know, controlling and seeing what people are doing, right. typically goes under the under the um, uh, sort of under the under the radar of the tr traditional security defenses. So um, so once they can get that access, it becomes much more difficult to detect when somebody's doing something. Right. In inappropriately with, with in the environment. Right. Uh, also, you know, a number of these uh, these credentials are not being managed very securely, right? So a lot of people sharing credentials, they never change their credentials, they use the same password on every router in the organization, right, right. they never rotate it, um, those sorts of things. So there are a lot of weaknesses or vulnerabilities around around uh, credentials. Just like in the past, there's vulnerabilities around assets, right, and, and, and vulnerabilities around applications. Now there's vulnerabilities around how you manage as, uh, uh, access and credentials. Right. And that's, that seems to be an area that people are targeting. So you, you would assume that people that have privileged access would have a little bit higher um, education, behavior, uh, practices on avoiding things that they're not supposed to do. But it sounds like not necessarily or? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, certainly on, on, on the- uh, On paper, that's on, what on you On paper, think. absolutely, yeah. I think the trade-off sometimes is, you know, from a, from a, a password management perspective, it's difficult to do that manually. Uh, if you think about the number of passwords in an organization, right, shared accounts on systems and applications, on, on networks and uh, network devices and cloud apps, it's just, it's just a number of things out there. So people really need a way to, to harness that, right, and, and to control that in a more automated way. Uh, and they just lack that today. Right. Uh, and then you know sometimes it, it's it's around operations, right? I mean, when I was a, when I was an admin, you know, I you know, bad to say, but I used the same password on a number of different devices. Sure. For me, it was easy to remember. Right. I couldn't complex and changing passwords becomes difficult to manage in some cases, right? So so you know, password management, uh, part of PAM, one of the components that we have, enables you to manage those things in a more auto automated and controlled way. Um, without putting a lot of burden on the administrative team, right. which, which is what we're looking for. So how far are we away from a better method than password? It, it, it amazes me that we have phones with fingerprint readers and it still asks us for passwords to get into our phone. And yeah. you know, we have Salesforce at work and Salesforce is very secure, so they make us change our passwords, whatever it is, every four weeks or six weeks. Sure, and, yeah. And after yeah. a few, you know, I've gone through all like kind of my core, my core top 10 <laughs> passwords and it still won't let me in. Well, so, I mean, it's such a, it's such a not great way to access, and as you said, this expanding level of applications and stuff now, you know, our interaction with so many different things are so password driven. Right. So we've, you know, two-factor authentication is obviously helping, mm -hmm. but when are we going to get beyond 
passwords. Well, well I think, you know, for, from my perspective, I think passwords are going to be around for a long time, right? Because it's not just users that use passwords, right? Systems also use passwords. Application to application interfaces now use secrets or some sort of, of passwords and so on. So, right. you know, th they're going to be around for a long time. Even the ones that administrators and shared credentials, they're going to be around for 10 years plus. And I always say, even with, with multi-factor, it's always something you have and something you know. So I always think, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a good reason to keep them in, in, in a lot of cases. Uh, but even beyond the passwords, you know, even once you log in, there's still other things that you want to make sure are, are, are being addressed. So you want appropriate logging and controls and the analytics around what you're doing with that, with those credentials. You might want to restrict when you should have access. So maybe I don't want my administrators to be able to go start, you know, patching a system or, you know, uh, configuring a system unless appropriate tickets are in the ticketing system uh, during certain times of the day. So you start adding more controls around when they can actually use these passwords and then when they use them, ensuring that they're using them appropriately. Right. So right. there's a number of different aspects around uh, privilege access management other than just, you know, the passwords themselves. Right. But it's just, it's just funny, even with all the procedures and processes, you still have, at the end of the day, behavior. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, so many times people don't follow the right procedure. They, like you say, they share passwords. They Absolutely. don't apply the patches. And, and so you're fighting, you know, kind of the people process thing always in addition to the technology. Right. Piece. And sometimes it's difficult. I mean, just in, in, in some organizations, you still have end users that have full admin rights on their desktops, right? So if they get phished, you know, if a hacker gets on that machine, they have admin rights on that machine. And then they can use that as a footprint to go elsewhere, right? Then once they're on that machine, of course, they could have line of sight to anything inside your environment. So right. if those things inside your environment are prop are properly secured, um, network devices and so on, you know, th they could be susceptible if they're not being managed properly as well. So it, it's it's a it's a it's a big problem, and and again, as, as I mentioned before, it's a, it's a, in a lot of organizations, it's it's a missing security layer that they just don't have today, which is why the market's growing so quickly. Well, Brad, I think you got a lot of job security. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, he's thanks. Brad Hibbert. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from the Security in the Boardroom event by, put on by Chertoff. Thanks for watching.